Rome is a general purpose tool for thinking, for getting all your notes, all your research, um, all your thoughts organized. Uh, but one of the things that we want to get organized for is to, to get things done and to complete our tasks. So Rome has a lot of functionality around task management. Um, in fact, that's what a lot of our early users have been using it for the most. Um, so here I'm going to show a couple different ways that you can create to-dos in Rome and also why you might want to. Um, so the first way is if I am typing out a to-do or typing out a task, um, anywhere in that, uh, I can hit our slash command, I can hit the down arrow, or I could just click um, and it will uh, insert a link to to-do and these curly braces are the, the special um, syntax in Rome for Rome's uh, like unique functionality um, for embedding things or for, for showing all sorts of different um, custom components in Rome. Uh, there are our extension on um, the markdown syntax. Um, but what this does is if I have created a to-do, uh, I will, let me zoom in on this, this page, um, it will now be uh, filterable. So I can see the items which are to-dos um, and I can see the whole path for those items. Um, but uh, I can also, um, uh, if I click that to-do, um, clicking the to-do actually changes the link to, from to-do to done. So I can also do things like um, if I shift click on a filter, it will remove those from the tree. So this will allow me to just hide all the items which are done, uh, but without deleting them so that, you know, I can actually go back and over time um, get a good sense of the things which I've done on, on each given day. Um, uh, you shouldn't have to, you know, delete your history um, or lose track of, of what you've done. Um, by deleting something off of a to-do list uh, is our, our thesis on these things. We want to be able to, you know, use Roam for self-tracking. Um, so, uh, yeah, the there are a few options if you're not a big fan of key commands, um, or for instance, if you want to multi-select a bunch of these and make, a, a, you know, a section of your list to-dos, you can right-click on a, um, you know, blue is these multi-selected areas, and I can actually just make all of those to-dos at once. Um, but this one had already been made a to-do, so I don't always do the right thing, but that's kind of an edge case. Um, so, yeah, or if I just want to make a single one of to-do, I have um, make to-do as an option if I uh, left-click in the sidebar. Um, so those are a couple ways of making to-dos. I'm going to show one of the reasons why you would want to do this besides filtering, or it's, it's related to filtering, um, uh, in, in your Roam database. Um, so I have, uh, and you can, you can access it, you can access it by hitting um, Command U will open your search bar, um, and this will search all of your, um, it'll search all your text um, for that word but it'll also show the page at the top. So there is a page for to-dos uh, that gets created anytime you create any to-do um, or after you've created your first to-do. And if I visit that page, I can see um, all of the explicit mentions of that. And I can also see you know, the places where I use the word to-do, but, uh, but that's, that's less relevant right now. This un unlinked references is more useful for um, uh, organizing ideas when you've when you've put a lot of um, papers or quotes or essays uh, into into Rome, but here um, I can filter this the same way that I might filter um, uh, on a page. So I can actually say, well, are there any to-dos which I have assigned to myself? Um, you know, where I've given this this tag of Connor, and I can say, oh, well. On my GTD page, I still have to write up a Rome for GTD document. And uh, in our Welcome to Rome page, I put as an example to do record a demo video of Rome, and I signed it to myself. Um, but I can also say, you know, if I have a, a project like diagrams, 
right? Are there any things that relate to that? Oh, I need to, you know, create an example diagram for this decision tree. So I can organize them by people, by project. Um, yeah, like what page I had referenced them on. So the filters are actually going to look at the whole path of a, uh, of, of a, pay, of a, a block. A block is what we call these bullet points. And so you'll end up getting um, a bunch of the information that was, that was previously just stored in the path that you were doing. So if you nest, you know, if I go to um, Rome demo videos here and I realize that actually all of these things here relate to Rome demo videos, I can highlight this and wrap that in a page and create a page for Rome demo videos now, um, which will show all these. And this is where I'm actually going to eventually upload um, uh, this recording. But if I go back, just clicking the back button to to-dos now, I could filter these to-dos by um, Rome demo videos. And because they were in the link, I can actually see here were all the tasks um, that were related to Rome demo videos. I need to um, show off how to use filters, which I've just done, and show off how to use mentions. Um, and uh, yeah, those are, uh, and I think I've, I've talked a little bit about implicit and explicit links now. Um, so now the next one is gonna be um, referencing blocks. So let's jump back to my daily notes. And uh, here I will um, show off how we do referencing blocks with to-dos. Um, I'll go more into this in a future video where we're talking about using Rome as a research tool, but right now I'm actually just gonna to, one of the main um, advantages of referencing blocks is if you're doing any sort of life tracking or basically figuring out, you know, how long did it take me to, to get this task done? Um, or like, you know, what time was I working on this task? What other things were going on? If I um, uh, want to embed a block uh, somewhere in my, you know, my list of lists, um, I can just type slash and, and look for block embed. And now I'll have an autocomplete where I want to say show off referencing blocks. Um, and here I have I can, I can edit this just as easily as I could edit it up here. Um, but I can also click here and I'll see the mentions of this and I'll see the original source right here. So I can, I can go and visit the original source pretty easily. Um, or if I am, uh, I'll, I'll give an example of our, in our welcome message or our um, welcome to Rome. Um, I actually have, uh, you know, I've, I've used this in a number of places, this, you know, brief explanation of some of our features. Um, I embedded the whole thing wholesale in a couple different pages. I embedded it on July 31st, which is where I'd originally written it. Uh, and then I embedded it on a, another page where I was showing off Rome um, as a tool for a particular research process. Um, so yeah, that's some of the advantages of embedding blocks is you just, don't have to repeat yourself. So if you're um, writing something and using the same quote or the same paragraph or the same set of ideas a few times, and you want to make sure that um, they're actually staying consistent, uh, if I update this to say Rome Research, um, then it's going to actually, you know, appear as Rome Research uh, everywhere or research. Um, everywhere. I can change it in one place and not have to worry about uh, finding all the other places where I'd copied and pasted it. Um, and that, yeah, for to-dos, that becomes pretty useful. Um, so that is showing off referencing blocks. And that is our video for creating to-dos. So if I've, you know, when I zoom in on this page and I filtered out my done things, it's no longer on my, um, my done options. Oh, and uh, for time tracking, I tend to just use the slash command and uh, and pull in time so I can get a sense of, um, let's actually just reference um, video for creating to-dos. So that was the thing which I got done.